Food has always built community. I mean, we celebrate, form new relationships, and comfort our friends with the help of our local restaurants. In these uncertain times, we still want to support and honor our local restaurants, so we'll continue bringing you new episodes of Check, Please! Bay Area, recorded earlier this year. They were perfect and fluffy and felt like clouds on your tongue. It was crunchy, it was juicy, it was tender. It was everything you want. That me and my dad had a fight over it with our spoons like miniature swords. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of butter. Right. Yeah, lots of butter. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. The national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area diners review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Here's how it works we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, we've got a new generation of foodies joining us at the Check, Please table. Case in point, our first second generation Check, Please guest. William's mom was on the show years ago. He's inherited her love for French food and can't wait to share his Berkeley brunch spot. Next, competitive swimmer Marlo practically dives into big bowls of shrimp and grits at her Oakland Soul Food Lounge. But first, Caden's well on his way to becoming the next Bill Gates, as writing software programs is his favorite pastime. But he's also into simpler pleasures, like the down-home, finger-licking, southern comfort food he finds in the North Bay town of Windsor at Sweet Tea's Restaurant and Bar. My husband and I met in Georgia, and he fell in love with a barbecue. I always tease him, I tell him I'm not sure whether he liked me or the barbecue, but... <laughs> Hi, I'm Ann Tussie. I'm the chef owner of Sweet Tea's Restaurant in Windsor, California. It's brisket chili just about to finish. I love to cook. I grew up when my mom loved to cook. A lot of the recipes do come from my family. You know, I've been eating fried chicken since I can remember, and so that's one of my favorite dishes for sure. God gave you two hands for a reason, one for the wheel and one for the wing when you're eating your chicken driving down the road. <laughs> Woke up early this morning, got the meat from the night before. I'm Hawaiian and a lot of people come to the restaurant and think I come from the south. I said, yeah, I come from South Hilo and uh, we do a lot of barbecue in there. You know, everybody has a barbecue in the back of their house. They don't have my barbecue, they don't have my smoker, you know. When you cut into that brisket and you see the moisture just flowing out of there, making your mouth water, you know, and then the ribs, you're cutting that too, and you know, wow. We originally opened in uh, Fountain Grove, and we were almost about to have our six-year anniversary when the Tubbs fire happened in October of 2017. When the fire happened, at first you think everything's gone, and then you realize it's just a building. The people are all still there. Your customers, thank God, are all still there. I mean, we immediately knew that we wanted to rebuild and we were going to reopen. The smoker survived. It fired right up, and we've been using it ever since. <laughs> if you ever down, Windsor down, we love doing what we do. That's what makes everything good. We love doing what we do. Oh, sweet tea, if you ever die, winter down, sweet tea is the place yeah. to be. <laughs> Caden, 
what is it that makes um, sweet tea so special? Well, Sweet Teas has just the most fun and lively atmosphere. And the best thing of all is that when you walk in, there's a spectacular smell that welcomes you. <laughs> and the people are always so nice, even if they're jam-packed, all the tables are full, they're still so nice to you. And that smell is that big barbecue grill going, right? There's a lot yeah. of, of wonderful aromas wafting through that place. Yeah. Yeah? You guys are all shaking your head. That's yes, great. yes, <laughs> yes. Great. So what's the first thing that you get? Like when you start off, do you get appetizers? What's one of your first appetizers, Caden? The first appetizer that I get is probably the... Um, make that definitely <laughs> the crispy Brussels sprouts. They're just cooked perfectly, so they have layers and layers of flavors. Did you guys get the Brussels sprouts? What did you start with, William? I started with the nachos mm. with brisket on them. The nachos, it was, it was a pile of nachos. It had like white cheddar cheese sauce, and then it had some barbecue sauce on the top and some, like, some brisket all in there. It was really simple, but really good. And did you share that? Because that's a big... Yeah, that's I a shared that. Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the deviled eggs, and those were just amazing. What was so devilish about those? The sauce. The sauce they put on it, it's just... It goes so well. It ties the egg and the, the bacon. All of it ties together. And I had it with um, a bite of lettuce, and that little crunchiness just... So get to the moon. Nice. And then I also had the hush puppies. Okay. Oh yeah, those, I had those too. Are oh. amazing. <laughs> like nice and smooth and nice and flaky in the inside and crunchy and nice and fried on the outside. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're so good. I always load them up with honey butter. What do you usually get for your main courses? I usually get the BBQ combo plate. I got it with sausage, um, tri-tip. And the best food mankind has ever tasted, <laughs> like ever, which is definitely the ribs. <laughs> I mean, like they're, they're just so you good. Had those? Yeah. You had those. I mean, like they have just the right amount of heat and spice and flavor and juiciness and just like, oh my gosh, it's making me hungry thinking about it. <laughs> Fall off the bone. You had those ribs too. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? The ribs are really tender. They were they were hot. The barbecue, I had barbecue sauce on mine. Mm -hmm. The barbecue sauce was really like smooth and smoky, and the ribs were smoky too. Did you have the combo plate too? Yes, with I the had ribs? three ways. Okay. I had tri tip, brisket, and ribs. The brisket was really smoky. It was okay. like it just came out of the smokehouse. Yeah. And it was really tender. The tri tip, it was good. It wasn't as tender as the brisket, but it was all seasoned perfectly, mm -hmm. and it was all really smoky. And talk a little bit about those sides, because you get the biscuit and you get the oh coleslaw or the mac and cheese or the... Okay, so the biscuit is like heaven with honey butter. It's like <laughs> taking a bite out of heaven and then putting honey butter with it. So you got ribs mm -hmm. and you got the biscuit and you're going, you're already in heaven right here. Yeah, I mean like... <laughs> the mac and cheese was hot. It was really hot when it came out. It was really creamy. You can tell there was a bunch of different cheeses in it. Yeah. Any other sides that you guys had? Cold I had the flour. mashed potatoes. You had mashed potatoes. Okay, yes. tell me about the those. Mashed, there were garlic mashed potatoes. Ooh. The mashed potatoes were, they were smooth. I had, I put butter on mine. <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was really, it was really good. You're allowed. You're allowed. <laughs> what did you have? I had the shrimp and grits. I liked it because they put a twist on it. They had corn and sausage in it, and they put a tomato sauce with it, which I really liked it. It like the corn put flavors with the grits, mm. and then I also had blackened catfish, and that was amazing. Like you just kept on wanting to take a bite. It was like you could taste the smokiness mm -hmm. and a little bit of char, and all the seasoning dancing into the fish, mm. and. The greens, mm -hmm. amazing. Like, they were little bites of just sweet candy. <laughs> like, you just... People don't always say that about greens, yeah. right? Anything else that you had? Yes, I had the fried chicken. It was very, like, thin battered. Like, you could see the skin through the batter. It was crunchy, it was juicy, it was tender. It was everything you want. And the sides you got with it. I got mac and cheese again. <laughs> <laughs> you can never have too much mac mm -hmm. and cheese. <laughs> and the coleslaw. The coleslaw was creamy and it was crunchy. Well, mm -hmm. you guys have been eyeing this in the center of the table, so I know you want to talk about desserts. 
don't you? At yes. this spot? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Kayden, you so started good. off. So my favorite dessert there is definitely the butter cake. It just has the perfect combination of smoothness and the texture and like that kind of crust on the outside is really good and like a soft crunch. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's made right there on you yeah. know, house made right on the, there. On the menu it says made in the house with lots of love. <laughs> and lots of butter. Right? Yeah, lots of butter. <laughs> kind of like a bunt cake. Did you guys have that? I had that. Yeah. The ice cream with the cake. It was like the perfect mixture in the fruit. Drizzled with the sauce. Oh, what did so you have? Good. I had the key lime pie, which I thought was amazing. It had a nice, juicy, big dollop of whipped cream. It had powdered <laughs> sugar on it, which I thought brought sweet to the lime flavor. And the crust was nice and thick and brittle. Mm. It was perfectly like a cracker going with your cream mm. for the um, key lime pie. It was amazing. And um, did you find it? pretty big portions. I mean, when you get that combo platter. Uh, they, were, they were pretty big. Yeah, did you take anything home? Anybody? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, you yeah. definitely will have leftovers. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> All right, this is your spot. Caden, wrap it up for us. If you would like some really tasty, authentic Southern food, and enjoy it in a fun and lively atmosphere, Sweet Tea's is the place to go. All right, and Marlo. If you want an upscale, homey family place and a perfect twist on great originals, Sweet Tea's is the place to be. Okay, and if William. If you want great barbecue food and great smokehouse meat, Sweet Tea's is the place to go. If you would like to try Sweet Tea's Restaurant and Bar, it's on Brooks Road in Windsor. It's open every day for lunch and dinner, and the average tab per person for dinner is around $35. William's a football player who knows before he hits the gridiron, he's got to fuel up on his favorite meal of the day, breakfast. No cold cereal for him, it needs to be hearty. And he's found it in Berkeley at a place that takes pride in its pan perdu and chocolate show. Time to loosen your belts for La Note restaurant. I am Dorothea Matrani, the owner and creator of Leno Restaurant. I've been established here for 22 years. And then the coat suit, how can I So I decided to do something really simple that's homegrown from my family. I'm born in the south of France. My grandmother's Corsican. So all of the flavors are influenced by the south of France. Uh, growing up, we ate this kind of wholesome farm-to-table food, and that's what drove this menu from the get-go. It was originally just a solid, beautiful, wholesome breakfast. I wanted to include a lot of the flavors, which is lavender and thyme and garlic and roasted tomatoes. The building is 1875, and I was raised in old buildings all my life in France, so I was instantly attracted to it. It's a gem. It's got all of its quirks and its soul, and I fell in love. It chose me, I believe. I do a lot of community outreach, I sit on downtown boards, I am a huge advocate of small business survival. When this all happened sheltered in, there was not even a doubt I had to survive so that the community could still enjoy it, so that my employees could come back to work. And I tell people now who want to embark on this journey of having a restaurant, it's a story about your relationship to people and to food. And mine is very clear. And it's very heartfelt, so I really care about who's sitting at the table and just to make people happy. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. So you've been going to this place for a long time, haven't you? Mm -hmm. What is it that you like so much about it? I like the environment because I used to go to the library and then I would head over to the restaurant just to have some hot chocolate with my mom. Oh, the hot chocolate is the best, huh? The hot chocolate is like a bowl kind of cup. It's really chocolatey. It's very creamy. It has a swirl of cream on top. Yeah, dessert to drink at the beginning yeah. of the meal. That's mm -hmm. right. Do you always go at breakfast? Yes. They do have lunch and dinner. I get the Cota Est, which has eggs, the pancakes, uh -huh. and the bacon. Right. 
the bacon is really crispy. Yeah. It's really crispy. Yeah. The eggs, they're, they're not dry, they're just like perfect. Mm -hmm. And the pancakes, of course, you know. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> huh? But then I, I have to get the side of potatoes. The potatoes, they're really crispy. There's garlic on the potatoes and there's, you can feel like the garlic aroma. You have to make sure everybody at the table eats garlic when you do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Marlo, tell me what you had. So um, I had my eggs done over easy and then it came with home fries and I got a side of um, sausage, which was delicious. Um, I also tasted the creme fresh pancakes, which was my favorite part of the meal. They weren't too dense or too light. They were perfect and fluffy and felt like clouds on your tongue. <laughs> and I would go back there just for those cram fresh pancakes. They were like, I, I just too. had to keep on like taking it. I had um, the cram fresh pancakes for my main course um, with a side of chicken apple sausage. Now, let me just tell you one thing, is that the presentation of all the food at La Note was just amazing. Yeah, it's a great yeah. presentation. Yeah. And the creme fraiche pancakes are so good because they have like that kind of like double spiral thing that I love. <laughs> and um, another person got the ginger lemon pancakes with poached pears and bacon. And I never thought lemon and ginger would bring out each other so well. Did you have those too? Yes. The lemon gingerbread are almost like a gingerbread cookie and a pancake like smashed together. And if that wasn't enough, you <laughs> even have the poached pears. And the poached pears are just perfect because it gives it a really festive flavor. Right. Now the chicken apple sausage was really interesting because it was almost yeah. like a war going on in your mouth between chicken and apple. And it was just Who won? Like, unfortunately the apple did. Oh, you like more of the of the chicken. Yeah, yeah. The chi I like the chicken yeah. better. Got to be the perfect. But you had the chicken apple sausage. Yeah, yes? I like the chicken apple sausage. Like you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Like I wrapped the ginger lemon pancake around one of my chicken apple sausages, Ooh. and that was like that's like a the pig. little we call it pigs in a blanket. And that's oh, what I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. See, then you get all that layers of flavor yeah, all wrapped up together in one, right? Do there. you get the chicken apple sausage sometimes? No. no, you got your you got your order and you're sticking with it, right? I do. I do get the pampered cinnamon and brioche French toast. Right. French toast oh, because yes. it's made out of brioche wanted, bread. Yeah, right. You get that really beautiful. I wanted to get the French toast, but I I, I saw the home fries and I was like, I gotta get this. William, your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you want authentic French food with a Berkeley twist, go to Leno. Okay, and Marlo. If you're looking for a great French breakfast place with awesome pancakes, Leno is the place to go. And Caden. If you're looking for a place with great food, friendly people, and just so cozy and warm inside, La Note Restaurant is the place to go. If you would like to go to La Note Restaurant, it's on Shattuck in Berkeley. It's open every day for breakfast and lunch with dinner Thursday through Saturday. And the average tab per person is around $25. Marlowe's Pick is a soul food place with a creative twist. Featuring dishes that blend Creole, Cajun, and Asian flavors, served up in a venue that once hosted Oakland's jazz greats. It's Magnolia Street Wine Lounge and Kitchen. So the name of the building that we're in is the California Hotel, a historic landmark. In the heydays, way, way back, West Oakland was a hub for music, culture, and food. There were three clubs in this block right here, and at the California Hotel there were two. Both hosted live music almost every night. Top name artists, they all played here, and they would stay upstairs because it was one of the only places where African Americans could stay. I named it Magnolia Street because I grew up around the corner on Magnolia Street. Both of my grandmothers were cooks. My African-American grandmother was the mother of the kitchen at church. She cooked all the food for the church, all the pies, all the cakes. And then my Chinese grandmother and I spent every day at the market 
Both of them influenced everything that I do today. So I actually call it Cajun, C-A-S-I-A-N, because it's the fusion of those two things. It's all the way comfort. <laughs> you know, it's straight up grandma house and southern comfort on a plate. This is not the diet place. We use so much butter. But we have salads, you know, with delicious blackened salmon on top, Cajun roasted shrimp, and that has flavor too. We just want to start pumping back into the community, especially for West Oakland. Coming back to the neighborhood and trying to revitalize that whole culture and being able to be someplace where people can come and listen to amazing music, drink awesome wine, and eat great food. And I think when people leave here, they're gonna leave with a sense of hope, a sense of restoration, and a full belly. <laughs> a satisfied soul. <laughs> Marlo, I've noticed that at the other restaurants, you, you like the spicy kind of flavors of the catfish. And so is this your favorite type of cuisine, this sort of Creole Cajun cuisine? Yeah. They put seasoning on everything. Like, um, for example, the fries, they aren't just regular fries. They're, they make them thick and then they put their own nice Asian twist on it with all these nice flavors. And so, my favorite dish to have there is definitely the fried fish. Like, you will just, it doesn't even... <laughs> They're both going, uh -huh. they, It doesn't even need seasoning. It's just the textures bring out everything in the dish, and, like, that's all you need for it. Did you get yeah. those flavors when you were... Yes, I... Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, so good. <laughs> um, I did have the salmon creole, which oh, was okay. just, like, absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I mean, it's the best fish I've just ever tasted. Most of the seasoning and stuff was on the outside, so it didn't completely change the flavor of the fish. And it was also slightly sweet. And the shrimp and grits are perfect. Like, they have this chili oil that they put over it. You can really taste the great, juicy, nice flavors. And I love how the shrimp is just pull off the tail. Yeah. Perfect. What else did you have, William? I had the oxtail hash. The oxtail hash had like hints of like ginger. Mm. The oxtails were really tender. Mm. It wasn't spicy, but it was kind of in the middle. Yeah. And there was an egg on top. Ooh. I loved it. Yeah. What else did you have besides the drop mm -hmm. over, bring you to yes. heaven salmon, right? Well, the first thing, which was just like absolutely amazing, was the hush puppies. The hush puppies are just so good. When you dip them in the sauce, it gives them that really good like spice. Oh yeah, the hush puppies, it's kind of like their bread mm -hmm. and all their fried food is delicious, but especially their fried shrimp and their fried chicken. Those you could just keep on eating and just order more, but like you know you're full <laughs> and you want to save room for dessert, but you just also want some more fried food. It's like an ultimatum. Like, do I want chicken or dessert? I can't decide. And they're both well, like you can it. have the best of both worlds. You can have it yeah. all. So I also had the veggie Cajun pasta, which was really good because it had some broccoli, which is phenomenal. I was almost in an Alfredo sauce. Okay. It was more rich and creamy, which I really liked. And everything mixed together, it was just like the perfect combination of everything. Was it spicy? Um, actually, that was like the only dish that I didn't find spicy. Did you have any dessert, William? Any room uh, for dessert? It was kind of a dessert, but I had the peach cobbler with the side of the fried chicken. So kind of like was, a chicken and waffle thing going uh -huh. on, right? Yeah, the, the fried chicken was really good. It was crunchy, it had like a thick batter, and you just wanted more of it. Right. I had a peach cobbler, mm -hmm. which, I mean, it was just so good that me and my dad literally had a fight over it with our spoons like miniature <laughs> swords. And it was like the perfect balance of sweet, and it was just like so good. Bottom line, I mean, sweet, warm goodness in a bowl. Okay, Marlo, your spot, wrap it up for us. If you're looking for a southern, homey place with food that will satisfy your taste buds, Magnolia Street Kitchen is the place to be. Okay, and William? 
If you're looking for a good Creole spot in Oakland, Magnolia Street is the place to go. Okay, and Kaden. If you're looking for some super good Cajun food with awesome salmon, then Magnolia Street is the place to go. If you would like to try Magnolia Street Wine Lounge and Kitchen, it's on San Pablo Avenue at 35th in Oakland. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday and closed on Mondays. And the average dinner tab per person is around $25. I have to thank my superb guests on this week's show, Caden, who cleans his plate every time at Sweet Teas in Windsor, William, who likes his hot chocolate brimming with whipped cream at La Note in Berkeley, and Marlo, whose happy place is a warm plate of hush puppies at Magnolia Street Wine Lounge and Kitchen in Oakland. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Come on in, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I we do it again. <laughs> we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants we visited today. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors, whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com at Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full-service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. If you could start a restaurant, what would be like the food or the feel? A build your own restaurant. So it would be a mix of all kinds of different foods. It'd be like soul food and Mexican and French. Mine would be a burger place that you can like build any burger you want, put any toppings. I would have a restaurant called Table for Two where it would be kind of like a private restaurant. You're the only ones there. That's fantastic. Yeah. You guys are so smart.